Nations are advising their citizens to evacuate from Japan. With increasing radiation emanating from the Fukushima nuclear plant, changing winds could engulf the nation of Japan into an unprecedented nuclear crisis. Could this present danger be a warning for things to come throughout the entire world? We'll talk about it today on Politics and Religion. Look, there are two things I don't discuss, politics and religion. In my house, we don't talk about politics and we don't talk about religion. I'll talk to you about anything except politics and religion. I never talk about politics and religion. Politics determines how we'll live here on Earth. Religion determines how we'll live forever. I'm Irvin Baxter. I think it's time we talk about it. Uncertainty engulfs the crisis presently sweeping over Japan. Now then, governments, including the government of the United States of America, are advising their citizens to leave the country of Japan. Uh, America has gone so far as to charter planes to airlift out any American citizens remaining there. Now, put yourself in the shoes of the Japanese. They have no place to go. Do they abandon their country to its own fate? How about the people who are working at the power plant? Many of them already are being labeled as suicide heroes, that just being there with the high levels of radiation is signing their own death warrant. We certainly hope that that is not true. Everything is being done that they know how to do, all the way from helicopters swooping up large containers of water and dumping it over on the uh, different facilities at the power plant. Uh, to We've loaned two fire trucks to the Japanese government, but those fire trucks are not being manned by Americans. They are being manned by Japanese, which means perhaps that we didn't have any Americans that wanted to go in there and sign their own death warrant by being there. Now, we have some experience to draw on, and that's the experience of Chernobyl, what happened there. Uh, at Chernobyl, there were many people who died as a result of being on the front lines of fighting the Chernobyl fire. Some people are thinking that the only answer to this present disaster is the same answer finally implemented at Chernobyl, and that is that they went in and actually poured tons and tons and tons of concrete on the facilities until they encase those facilities in concrete, controlling the radiation that way. What will happen? Well, we don't know for sure. But I want to talk about it today because as I was preparing for this program, I began to wonder if this could be a warning. Sometimes God warns us of things to come. Since we know for certain, absolute certain, that there is a war coming that will engulf the world in a nuclear holocaust. It's going to happen. The Bible specifically says a war is coming that will kill 2.3 billion people. It says specifically one-third of mankind. Look it up for yourself, Revelation 9, verse number 15 states there's going to be a war that will kill one-third of the world's population. Now, I don't have time to go through the entire prophecy now. If you'd like to hear the entire prophecy, uh, we have a DVD called World War III. If you haven't seen it, you've got to see it. Pick up the phone right now, dial 1-800-END-TIME, and order your copy of World War III because every person on this planet right now needs to see that DVD. Is this World War III? No, of course not. It's not. But my question is, could it be a wake-up call? World War III is coming. It's going to come out of the Middle East. The Bible says specifically it will emanate from the area of the Euphrates River. We're talking about Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan. We're talking about uh, all of the Middle East that's boiling right now, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, 
uh, Kuwait, uh, Bahrain, and or Saudi Arabia and Kuwait have sent troops into Bahrain to quell the demonstrators there. Iran is saying, you have done a terrible thing. You shouldn't be doing this. Uh, however, there's increasing conflict between Saudi Arabia and Iran, the two big oil powers of the Middle East. So a lot's going on there. And uh, at any time, the war that will kill one third of mankind could break out. So what does Japan have to do with that? Well, I don't mind telling you. I've been thinking, what about storing up some potassium iodide pills? Because one of the big things you can do easily uh, when there's the threat of nuclear contamination, you can take those pills and they will safeguard your, safeguard your thyroid. Uh, and thyroid cancer is one of the first outgrowths of any nuclear contamination. And I was thinking about that. I also noticed on the headlines yesterday that potassium iodide pills are becoming very scarce here in the United States of America because some people hearing that there is a nuclear cloud coming from Japan toward the West Coast are concerned. Now our scientists are telling us, look, it's not a problem. By the time it gets here, it will be so diluted that it will have no significant effect on your health. But when they say no significant effect, and no effect. Those are two different things that they are saying. They're already saying that the nuclear cloud will arrive tomorrow here on the West Coast. And of course, if they don't get the continual belching out of nuclear substance from the uh, Fukushima uh, power plant, if they don't get that stopped, then it will, uh, will arrive Friday and Saturday and Sunday and Monday and, until they get it stopped. Because once the stream is flowing toward us, it will continue to flow, and it's supposed to hit uh, not only California, but Arizona, Nevada, Utah, some of the places that they named off that it could hit. Now, the further it goes, the more diluted it becomes and the less impact it has. But it's making us stop and think, uh, wouldn't it be wonderful when this war comes that's going to kill one-third of mankind, it will be nuclear. You don't kill 2.3 billion people without a full nuclear exchange. It's going to happen. The United States, I'm almost positive, is going to be involved because we're the central protagonist in the Middle East right now. We're in uh, 50,000 troops in Iraq, 100,000 tro troops in Afghanistan. Uh, we have our nose in everybody's business over there. And that's where the war is going to start. So we're there. We're on site now. 230,000 troops today as I speak. We're there. Now, when will the war break out? Could be next week. Could be next month. Could be next year. Could be two, three, four, five years from now. I don't expect it to be that long, but it could be. I don't know. However, I know for positive for absolute positive, it's coming. I can read it for you black and white in the scriptures. It's coming. Now, do I want to tell you this? No, who wants to tell the world one out of three of you are going to die soon? I don't want to say that. That smacks of negativity. I want to be positive. I want to be upbeat. But the truth is, it's getting ready to happen. And you need to prepare for it. You need to prepare for it, number one, by making sure you have eternal life. Because if you don't make it through this war, and one-third of us will not make it through. If you don't make it through, you need to be ready. And the way you can make sure you're ready is to be born again. Jesus said, except a person is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And that means you cannot enter eternal life. That's the bottom line. So the first thing we want to do is help you make sure you're ready. By the way, if you'd like to read your own copy of What Do You Mean Born Again?, you either can call us here and we'll send it to you, or else uh, you can go to our website, endtime.com, E-N-D-T-I-M-E.com, and you'll see a list of questions over on the right-hand side. One of the questions is, what do you mean born again? Click on it. The article is there. I wrote that article. I tried to write it in uh, language that the common man can understand, in simple, down-to-earth language. What did Jesus Christ mean by what he said? Uh, I think that it'll be an enjoyable read for you, and you can also check yourself, have I done this? If you read it and you, you don't think you've done everything, call us here at End Time Ministries. Ask to speak to one of our ministers. Talk to them about it. That's what we're here for. We're here 
to help you. So the first thing you can do is to get ready spiritually. But the second thing, perhaps we should be preparing something and we already have it in discussion here at End Time Ministries to put together a preparedness package for this time to come because there are some simple common sense things you can do. A lot of people think if we have a nuclear war, everything's going to be gone anyway. But if you really study the fact, that's not true. Now, if you are at ground zero of any nuclear uh, explosion, then you're gone. Uh, they won't even find a trace of you. Uh, you will be vaporized. The heats are so intense at the center of a nuclear explosion. But uh, for every person that's at the center, there's going to be 100,000 that are on the periphery of a nuclear explosion. And there are things you can do to safeguard yourself. Now, right now in Japan, they're telling everyone, well, get at least uh, uh, 20 miles away. And if you're beyond, uh, if you're between 20 and 30 miles away, stay inside your house. Keep your door shut. Keep your windows shut. Uh, produce as little air circulation as possible so that you will not be as affected. And that is true. You will not be as affected. Now, if the radiation levels get high enough, that's not going to help you. The U.S. government has told all the Americans in Japan, get at least 50 miles away. Now, here's the tricky thing about it. Right now, fortunately, thanks be to God, the winds are blowing out to sea from the nuclear explosions, from the, from the nuclear leaks. And because they're blowing out to sea, then they have a long ways to progress before they actually hit population centers. However, if the wind switched tonight, Tokyo, uh, a city of what, 13, 14 million, is only 150 miles to the south of where all of this is taking place. And we have all the people down there. If the winds blow that way, it could be unspeakable, frankly. The death, the carnage could be unspeakable. Now, the U.S. government says, Americans, it's time to leave. It's too dangerous. But what about all of these, what, 80 million Japanese? I don't remember the exact population of Japan, but it's somewhere around there. Where are they going to go? What can they do? They're there. Fear? Yes. Uh, it's palpable when you read the stories. I've been reading them all morning. I've been trying to absorb the, the size of this uh, horrible disaster that's taking place. Uh, could it continue? What if they can't get it put out? What if it spins totally out of control? What if they can't stop it? Then it pours out radiation all over the world. Now, the only precedent that comes close to this is the Chernobyl nuclear accident that we experienced in 1986. Now, there's all kinds of figures about the final result of Chernobyl. As a matter of fact, there is no final result because they're still wrestling with the problem. But one figure I read said 125,000 have died as a result of Chernobyl. And also doctors and scientists say that 2 million people are still infected because when you ingest uh, cesium 137, which is the nuclide given off at Chernobyl, and I understand the same nuclide is being generated by this present disaster. Uh, if you drink water that's been contaminated with particles from uh, the radioactive, uh, the radioactivity, if you ingest it in your stomach, it finds its way to your bloodstream, and then it goes to your bone marrow. It has a half-life of 30 years before it causes cancer. So that's some of the things that people are wrestling with right now. So we may have two million cases of cancer yet as a result of Chernobyl. This disaster, well, we'll talk more about it in a moment. Every Monday at 9 p.m. Central on the Church Channel and at 10 p.m. Central on Daystar, Irvin Baxter presents End of the Age. End of the Age is a 30-minute program which gives intricate details about how Bible prophecy is not only true, but also how it lines up so perfectly with events going on in the world right now. Don't miss one End of the Age program every Monday at 9 p.m. Central on the Church Channel and at 10 p.m. Central on Daystar. Visit endtime.com for more details or call 1-800-END-TIME. When you think about Bible prophecy or the end of the world, what comes to mind? War, destruction, famine, disease, 666, Mark of the Beast, Antichrist, False Prophet, Four Horsemen, Trumpets, Seals, and Vials. What about 2012? 
How does all of this affect you as a teenager in today's world? Those are all good questions. But the thing to remember is that Bible prophecy was not put here for us to be afraid of it, but for us to know what is to come. When I was a kid, I used to pretend that I could see the future and predict what was